Hey guys, we're going to do a wheel bearing here. This is a hub assembly. They're more expensive to buy the part, but they're way easier to do for the install. Ryan's Mobile One. Grease that used to be on the inside is on the outside and it's kind of burnt. And here it's dry. Now she's singing. To get the wheel hub assembly out of this, it's not a whole lot of bolts. It's basically take your wheel off, so there's five, and then there's another five. There's three that hold this on. It's 18 millimeter from the back side. And then these two, I believe it's 21 millimeter. And pull the CV axle nut off. As far as getting it up in the air, you just need to lift it up by the pinch weld, put some jack stands underneath of it. You don't have to have a lift, but this makes it way easier for me to provide a video that's easy and quick to watch for you. Let's get to it. First thing, make a warm pile of lug nuts. If you're not using an impact like this, no worries. Just make sure to crack them loose before lifting the car up and then spin them off the rest of the way. Grab the tire, lift with your legs and not your back. That is just crusted over. So, nice thing about this coming with the new hub is this hub's getting pretty rusted. Man, look at that. It's just like cornflakes up in here. Go ahead and blow that out and close your eyes for heaven's sakes. We're going to need to lubricate that. My favorite go-to, Extreme Green Stuff. It's an environmentally friendly name. And it's an environmentally friendly product. But I use it because it just works. It's great. I'll leave a link. If you want to do it, do it. If not, whatever. I don't get rich off this stuff, but I do get free product. Basically, I get a commission and then I use whatever I make on it to just buy more of it. It's kind of high risk trying to go all the way. <laughs> you strip out your CV axle. So we'll clean it up. We'll squirt it again. This has antimony in it. You know, there's all kinds of lead and whatever that people put into gear oil and things as a high friction modifier. They use antimony. It's more expensive. Holy smokes is it effective, especially on threaded things. Threaded tools, drivers. 36 millimeter, by the way. You can rent a socket that'll do that from your local parts store. The symptom of this is it was just howling and screaming like a son of a gun. Just going down the road. Put it up on the lift, spin the back wheels, and it's quiet, it's fine, no big deal. And then you put it in four wheel drive and get going, and then you get that howling again. From inside the car, it sounded like it was from the other side. My wife was so convinced, I'm like, no, I think it's the driver's side. I've seen this kind of thing before. And she's like, no, it's gotta be. She was so convinced we would replace the other side on this, and then uh, it just progressively got worse. I mean, it was better a little but aggressively got worse. These bearing assemblies, they come with the wire harness for the ABS. So you want to get it unplugged and just replace it all as a unit. You've got these little buckle clips, so you just take a little plastic uh, pry tool, just pop them open, just pop it free. So push in, pry, out you go top one it's just kind of a pinch tab the actual plug is these two right here now you can tell the quality of a build i don't care if it's aircraft a car or whatever by the quality of the connectors and the wiring that the vehicle has i don't have anything nice to say about chrysler's except this is the best way to get these apart knock the dirt out of them and then you still won't be able to squeeze and get it apart so you lift up the tab physically push it up and you'll be able to get it apart and that way you'll be able to have a good plug that'll, well, you'll have a plug to put it back together with. The design of the connectors that hold the ABS wire to the brake hose is a takeaway from Chevy's ignition wire looms. And it just duplicates itself. It's kind of like a 69 kind of a design. And these are actually pretty good. You've got to get your screwdriver in there, pop them open. Doesn't matter which side you take it from. So you got your wire free. You just hang that over for now. I've got the caliper bolts on the back pulled out. Should have a coat hanger close by I can hang that with. Usually get my L to either go through the bolt hole or somewhere. A safety pivot. Hang it on a spring because why not? It's springtime. These little clips here are on from the factory. They just keep the stuff from falling off when it's bumping down the assembly line. You don't need them. 
grab them with the thing. This has almost 200,000 miles. I used to bend the tabs on these or unscrew them or save them or whatever. Anymore, I just obviously cut them off, get rid of them. Protect your lug nuts where you're going to be hitting so you don't have to worry about grinding threads off or uh, using the tap and die. In this case, I ain't care because the new hub comes with new wheel studs, but I might make a spare tire carrier or some other pack rat thing with this. Let's get that to loosen up a little bit. It's coming off. Just feel that. That's okay. Just try to stay out on the edge. I'll show you what I'm working with here. Everybody's going to get all critical and get their panties in a knot because it's everybody's burned out from COVID and politics and having their rights stolen. I get it. If you see you're just a little shiny here, on the surface it's fine. I try to stay up on top and that way I don't ding it because it can like smush it, you know, like Play-Doh smush it in. Not here! Ha! Not today! So here's our hub. We're already almost kind of there. Just spray up in here in these splines and start getting those to float the grit. If the grit piles up, it'll fight you. If you float it in something slick, foamy, then it doesn't. We've just got three bolts. I get those pulled out. Slap this thing out with a hammer. 50 millimeters, one here, here, and here. Because it's going that way, clockwise from this side is going to loosen it. I'm going to just ground my shoulder. Bend your knees, get ready to catch yourself when it goes crack. And just watch it, see if it's going to go good. Yep. Don't want to break something off, right? As you're backing out, if it starts to bind up, switch direction, tighten it back in. And just go back and forth, do the little clownfish in and out thing as you work on it. Don't be afraid to get out a wire brush and brush off the rust on this side. And send a lot of juicy juicy uh, breaker's goodness to it. A good way to test these if they're bad, you know, aside from putting them on the lift, is on a McPherson strut or something with a, a spring. When you turn it, you can actually feel it just kind of vibrating in here. Get all this rusted paint crap off. You get a little bit of this stuff running down the sides. So if you can fit it in there, Getting an impact on this can either get stuff stripped out faster or get it out faster depending on your preparation. Here's one of the bolts. This look like this and they're they're coated in some good stuff, some good anti-corrosive stuff. I always put blue Loctite on these or green because the coarse thread stuff like this and especially being something where your whole wheel can fall off. Uh, you want to make sure you do that right. But overall, this job is not that hard. Uh, sometimes these can be a real bear to get out of there. And the power steering helps you turn the wheel. And you have a socket on that and you have an extension go to the frame. I've done some videos on that in the past. All right, grounded, balanced. Just use your pulling muscles. All your muscles are designed to pull in this way. So if you're like that and you're using the weight of your butt hanging down seems to make a big difference. Don't even need impacts. That's one of my favorite tools. I got the normal one as part of the pull attack challenge I did with Eric the Car Guy, Engineering Explained, Bleep and Cheap, uh, G Body Garage, and Lara Bercobin, and a bunch of all those people for the pull apart challenge. He gave us uh, the regular kind, and then I discovered, I thought they're okay, it's just you can't break nothing free, you can't break anything loose with it. And then I discovered the fuel version, they're awesome. They work so well, a lot of the stuff you can break, obviously this is a little heavy duty for that. You don't want to abuse the tools, you want to last. So now I'm going to just put my shoulder into the bumper, and again I'm pulling, I don't have my weight to help me, but... Let's crack that free. Maybe putting these right back in, depending on how hard this is to get out. Um, that stuff I've been spraying everywhere. I should spray on the upside here too. On the plates, the plate doesn't so far. Well, this is free. It should come off. I'm just going to start knocking on it. 
try not to hit my thing because then I just got to do body work and hand belt hammering. Penny bashing. Smart. Just look at that. Which one needs to come more? This side does. This side's the most tight. That's what we were dealing with. Now stop and look at it. Think about it for a minute. So remember, this is where our window goes. Shield goes this way. You could cut this off if you wanted to at this point. I saved some of these just so that I can use them for projects. All right, well, see the axle wants to come too. Let's get the nut on this so that we can knock it free. At this point, you can put the nut on. Put the puller on the hub. And get the CV axle to press out. Let's see if I can water the garden here a little more get it to separate see has so much rust everywhere not super common in utah to have this much it's more like what eric the car guy sees back in ohio the rust belt so i'm covering the threads with the nut so that it kind of stays together so pulled out and I've got it to the side. So now I'm using this as a spacer from the CV axle. CV axle wants to go that way now. When I hit the nut, should break it free. Get yourself like this. It's kind of like when you, back when you're in school and you're in your fighting years, um, when you hit somebody, with your fist, you know, like whether it's in the arm, you know, just like rivalry, locker room stuff. When you hit somebody, you don't want to just hit and pull back. I mean, there's some martial arts where it's like you want to be sharp, but you want to hit through. <sighs> Overdid it. Anyway, that follow through. When I hit this with the hammer, I don't just like tap, tap, tap. It's like, I'm bam, I'm trying to hit what's behind that. I'm aiming to clobber what's ever back in here. And technically, that's where the rust is and mission accomplished. I mean, it's a difference if you're hitting somebody because you're fooling around or just messing versus if somebody touches your daughter or something. There's a whole, there's a whole different category of hitting force and follow through to that. Boy, it's going to drag the whole way, isn't it? Fun thing is, it's off now. Hard part's over. See, here's where the bolts go. You can see the holes here. When the new one goes on, we're gonna put a bunch of innocent on it, for one. Got some copper stuff. Get this really cleaned up. This shouldn't even be making contact hardly. And it was just so packed with uh, white rust, because this is aluminum electrolysized. I just want to get a lot of that broke down. Heck yeah. Man, the slime that suspends this copper stuff is thicker than the copper stuff is. I bought this. It gets the job done. It's not amazing, but it's good enough. So you got dissimilar metals of copper, aluminum, and steel in this becomes like a sacrificial anode, prevents them from binding together. We are so ready for the new part. I should probably buzz this. So this is the part that I was bashing up. So I'll have to take a hammer and flatten some of that out on the vice anvil. Well, we got that straightened out good. We got a lot of the big chunks knocked off of it. At least I thought I did. Throw on a little coat of, oh, that's nice. I'll sweep it under the rug basically, but it does slow down corrosion and makes it look better. I'm going to shake this one as good as I should have. Oh, 
It's like coloring, you just gotta have it the right color. If you're gonna put in all the work to make this look new and polish it up, make it look perfect, and you're an adult and you're not making minimum wage, you should probably just buy a new one. If they're even available, actually. Either way, this doesn't take much. Seven bucks, it's worth doing. I don't know if this is fun or I'm getting buzzed. One of the two. Hello friends, I'm back from the war against lunch and traffic and all that other kind of stuff. And it's time to put things in. This is all dried. With the coatings and everything that I do, here's how it's going to look. I get my big old thing of blue Loctite, which I use on... RC helicopters, uh, I use it on archery equipment, I use it on everything. Okay, that's way too much. You just want a little on the end. You don't want it to drag and drag and drag the whole way out. I put way too much, so I'm just going to rob it. I'm just going to have this stick out just enough for the shield to ride on. So this will clock the thing and get everything squared up. So it's got to go on this way so that it goes out around the rotor. Got our window for our sensor wires going to go through. We take our new bed bearing assembly. We know that we're going to have our sensor come out this way and then go up and around. It's going to follow the brake hose. Here. You can see the juggling act that this could be if you're trying to just hold things in place and do it after. If you're flagging hours and you don't want to have to redo stuff, this is a good way to be efficient with that. Get our splines to key up. We support the axle. And it doesn't go, it doesn't go, it doesn't go, and then boom, it's in. I wish these had a better system for changing direction, but it kind of works. Gonna suck that in there. Then we've got a little bit of blue Loctite on there. That helps to lubricate it and get the threads to line up and get happy. Remember the thing about how you have to have your gap right? Gap's a little crooked. The thing about a triangle is there's no need for the star pattern per se, but you do have to still close in the gap. This on there. These bearings are a little expensive. My cost on this is almost 200 bucks. It's like 160, 170, something like that. And it's worth it to pay the extra 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks in my opinion. We'll torque that later. We're just getting her in there so that this will seat and it's not pushing on it. It's worth it to buy the little extra nicer ones, you know, even if it's got a lifetime warranty. I just want things to work. <laughs> I don't want to screw, when I want to go on vacation or a trip or something, I want it to be just that. I don't want like extra stuff. You gotta get to the store and you got the downtime and all that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <sighs> Especially not me. All right, so everything here is good and will still be accessible even if the rotor's on. So I'm gonna just start putting all this stuff back together. What do you guys use to hang your calipers? I've been doing the same thing for so many years because it works. I'm not convinced it's the best method because it takes me a few seconds getting it on and off. But I'd be curious to know what you guys do. You have like some special tie strap or something that you like to use? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be curious to find out. All right, back to the blue stuff. These are the important ones that you gotta get done, especially on Chevys. Chrysler, the threads are just fine enough that you can get away with not using Loctite. But Chevys are so stinking coarse that there just isn't the surface area to provide the uh, friction needed for, with the thermocycles and everything. Your caliper can come undone on one of these. It can work loose, right? And then it comes out and it gets into, you know, like your wheel is around this and it can go through your wheel and make you have a flat tire. The air leaks through the rim because of a stripe in it. I have seen it. I've seen them first. T-pin back in the stuff. Always works. 
actually hold it and fling it around, hang it up by that if you wanted to. Fall in, fall in. Now I'm in over my head. Something she said. Completely misread. I'm better off dead. I swear I don't do these the same way twice. Say if you're in a dealership and you're doing these as like a recall or something. You get real efficient, but otherwise it can be tough. It's time to tighten it up. Make sure that my hose is good on the brake caliper. Alright, that's snug. Here's something fun. It's got all new clips. They both open either way. So I'm just laying these in there and clicking them on. There we go. And we've got the new tabs, so you can actually cut those off if you're getting the new stuff. Make sure that you're clicked on. You can visibly confirm that on this plug. Put your Chrysler red tab on it. One or two eyeballs. Snake eyes. And this stuff is getting so done. It's getting so pretty. Don't forget to go back and torque your stuff down. Using an 18 millimeter socket, the three hub to knuckle bolts get 96 foot pounds, which is 130 newton meters, then tighten an additional 90 degrees. So this is all done. Now we just need to get the nut snugged up. That was loose. When you put it on with an impact, you'd think it'd be tight. This can, I didn't get into it hard. So you take a screwdriver, stick it in the cooling fins, get something that's thick that you're not gonna bend or ruin it. Get your torque wrench set. And give her some torque. You don't wanna crush the bearing or else you're not ahead of the game. You're just gonna ruin the new one. But you don't want it to come loose either because the races on the spindle part, they can back off and get loose. Next, we're gonna double check the wire, make sure everything's connected and good. It looks great. I don't see any problem with chafe interference or any other issue. I'm double checking mentally that I got my torque on that and this especially, and that my calipers are tight. They are, so we can throw the wheel back on. We're about done. A lot of problems going on in the world. Just get on social media and you'll get flooded with them, but by and large, everything is awesome. We stand on the shoulders of giants. We've got such technology. We've got work ethic. We've got all these kids that grew up on farms that are now in corporate positions and they've got the character and the means to make good decisions. And I think overall, things are gonna be okay. Like you get on social media and everybody's tearing each other apart and being super critical, the cancel culture in full bloom this spring. In reality, when you focus on the negative, you get more negative. You fight and argue, you get more fighting and more arguing. We get this torque to spec on the ground. Get this set up and stick it on top of the toolbox so don't forget. Good habits make good mechanics. Tag it out basically, or in electronics, or electrician, you can tag out a circuit and say, make it cold because I'm going to be working on it. Or you can say, remove before flight so your pitot tubes can get airflow. And you got a little distraction machine attached at the hip or right on you all the time. So you just got to really have good habits. So this isn't three lug. We got to definitely get the star pattern. If you don't know what the star pattern is, it's just like when you draw a star. You go from one side to the opposite side. There we go. Thanks for coming along. I hope that you have a great success with this. I'm thankful that some of that stuff was rusty and hard to get off. So I can share that with you guys. Bonus footage at the end. Well, this is a small airport with some small town problems. You can see there's not supposed to be a road here. Some kids stole a plow and ran it across the runway with the plow down across the field and then across this road here and wiped out the fence. So now we got antelope and coyote. Everything's getting in here on the runway and creating a hazard for planes and if nothing else, just a hassle. We get cougars, all kinds of things in here. So anyway, we got some antelope and some coyotes in here, so we're going to herd them out and get them away so that they're not a danger to people or themselves. And this way the DNR doesn't have to come in and relocate them or whatever. We just kind of condition them to stay back. Antelope are funny because they'll run away from you and they'll also chase you. <laughs> Another rock. 
That was hard. Dude, the wind switched and died like last second. Hopefully they don't come charging at me. Another rocket, busted fin. I don't see the fin anywhere. There's no telling how far it got drugged though. I don't think this one deployed its parachute at all. Let's see what we can do off airport. <laughs> 